32 heroes entered the tournament, including Julius Caesar, Hannibal, Cleopatra, <coughs> Gandhi. There can be only one winner. Let the games begin. Battle 1. George Washington, Sun Tzu. This tournament will make no sense whatsoever. Get used to it. Something tells me this battle is going to be over quickly. Look at that ball shot. That's a low blow. Sun Tzu, obviously, because it makes perfect sense, has one of these abilities, which is going to abs- Wait. Oh my god. I don't believe it. George Washington somehow manages to clutch a second shot. So much for the art of war. George Washington wins that. That battle. Battle 2. Blackbeard's Rasputin. It's the battle of the beards, but whose beard is stronger? Rasputin immediately eating a grenade. This Tabs Hero Tournament is turning out to be an interesting one. Now, Rasputin does not have any actual weapons. He's just a really angry boy. Blackbeard, however, has plenty of explosives to actually do some damage. But then again, Rasputin's apparently got a massive schlong, so you never know. Rasputin has only got his fists. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's done a right hook. He's done a little bit of damage there. Rasputin in absolute furious enrage mode, but does it matter? Is it gonna be enough? No, it's not. The angry, bitter, resentful Ra Rasputin has gone down. Blackbeard wins that battle. Battle three, William Wallace, the Pope. Just to be clear, these units were made by you guys, so you've only got yourself to blame for the absolute savagery that's about to happen, because yes, I checked the stats on the Pope unit that was submitted, and he doesn't have an attack ability, so well done to whoever added him into the competition. Thank you for your participation. You literally sent me a Pope unit that has no attack ability whatsoever. Well done, everyone. Pats on the back all round. The winner of that battle is William Wallace. Battle 4. Alexander the Great Hannibal. Finally, we have got ourselves a battle between two actual warriors and a big first impact. Alexander the Great versus Hannibal. Two revered military tacticians and warriors. But which is the stronger? This is an actual fight. The rest of our battles so far have been cursed disasters, but not this one. This one's proving to be an actual battle. Any second now. One of these guys is going to be dropped and they will not get back up. But which will it be? With one mighty swing of the swords, Hannibal goes down. Alexander the Great wins that battle. Battle by Ramesses Otto von Bismarck. Now this is truly an interesting matchup. Prussian elite versus Egyptian pharaoh. Tell you what, the pharaoh's not really doing any hitting of his own. He's not actually landed a shot yet. Man, his dodge is pretty serious. Okay, just fight. None of this cowardice. I want the pharaoh to die because he's being a coward. Stand and fight the Prussian. Come on, Otto. Finish him. Finish him. It is tooth and nail here, and there we go. The pharaoh. Oh my god, he survived it. Please just die. Hopefully, Bismarck, who is trying his hardest, can drive him off the side of the map here. See you later, mate. Get wrecked. You got what you deserved. Otto von Bismarck wins that battle. Battle 6. King Leonidas, Vladimir Putin. Yep, this is exactly what I expected. Look at that. Leonidas taking the legs here. Come on, hit him whilst he's down. Why did you miss him? Why? Oh, look at that. That was a good little hit there. But Vladimir Putin going full Taekwondo on Vla Oh, no. This is actually concerning. If Vladimir Putin wins against King Leonidas, I'm going to be pretty salty, and I'm sure that most of you also will be pretty salty. But it looks to me like Vladimir Putin is absolutely abusing the King of Sparta right now. Uh, yeah, that was, that was horrifying to watch. So Vladimir Putin wins that battle. Battle 7. Robert the Bruce, big head. Now this is truly going to be a battle for the ages. Let's see who's going to win. He has literally got no weapons though. And the other guy, slight advantage if you ask me. Come on, big head, get back up. Punch him whilst he's down. Punch him whilst he's down. No, he's got too much honor. Big head has got too much honor. Come on, just wrap him around the face. No, what's happening? He's literally getting... 
cut to pieces. Oh, right hook. Yes. He's dodging pretty well, but he has also been hit about 12 million times. Again, look, he had too much honor to hit him whilst he's down and look what it does for him. If he loses it, it's because he's just got too much honor. That's all it would be. Hold, hold on a second. Who, so what that tells you about this video you're watching right here is it's fake news propaganda because Big Head never dies. And so Robert the Bruce wins that battle. Battle eight. Solomon the Magnificent Gandhi. Now, before you count him out, Gandhi does have this ridiculously overpowered book, which I suspect is probably going to one-shot his opponent before he even gets in striking distance. And there you go. So much for pacifism. He's like this Civ 4 AI that just nukes everyone. Can you imagine if Gandhi wins the tournament? Gandhi wins that battle. Battle 9. Napoleon Bonaparte, Winston Churchill. The penultimate battle between Britain and France, but who is going to come out on top? I mean, it's a pretty good start for Winston. Oh, but he does take one through the crotch. Are they really just going to do a stand and fire battle? Because if they do, then Winston Churchill, Napoleon missed his shot. Napoleon, what are you playing at? Winston Churchill's winning this battle. There's no way. Look at him. The reload speed is just not even on the same. And he's missed again. He's missed again. Britain is going to be taking this battle. I am sure of it. Tell you what, though. God, how much health has he got? I absolutely do not believe. Okay, another shot. Surely they must both be almost dead. I cannot believe. Okay, there we go. After about 20 bullets to the chest, Napoleon finally goes down. Winston Churchill wins that battle. Battle 10. King Charles XII Spartacus. Here we go. The Swedish king going head to head with the Roman gladiator. But which of these two units will come out on top? Top. Tell you what, those shields, actually, that shield is not actually doing anything against that flintlock. But his sword certainly will. Oh my god, those kicking abilities, man. They are so powerful. This shield is basically entirely redundant here. But if he gets kicked again, I think that's game over for him. He's gonna get pushed off the hill. Spartak is driving him off the hill, but that's another kick there. Oh my goodness. Spartacus goes down. Charles the 12th wins that battle. Battle 11. King Hell. Henry V Montezuma. An English king versus an Aztec emperor. Which of these two is gonna- Oh, that's a big hit from the club. And he's actually trapped the king's sword. Looks to me like Montezuma is off to an early lead here. This weapon he's using. What is going on? King Henry is still not even taking a hit here. The English king is getting absolutely abused. The only thing that's going for the king here is the long sword and the plate of armor somehow keeping him alive but for how much longer just hit him oh my god an execution basically tried to cut his head off king henry v wins that battle battle 12 cleopatra small head all right let's begin the battle i mean come on there's absolutely no doubt in anyone's mind who's gonna lose this cleopatra if you do not end small heads here we're gonna have some serious words oh my god tell you what cleopatra all jokes aside is absolutely Absolutely slaughtering him. Why is Smallhead on his feet and Cleopatra on the ground? If Smallhead goes through and Big Head doesn't, we're gonna have to just end the series here. This is unacceptable. Come on, Cleopatra, do us proud. Thank you. Justice has been served. Cleopatra wins that battle. Battle 13. Cortez, Erwin Rommel. Now, my bet's gonna be on Erwin Rommel to win this, seeing as he has an MP40. And, well, his opponent, the Spanish conquistador known as Cortez, doesn't. But nonetheless, Cortez in close quarters combat, how much damage can- Oh, tell you what, Cortez doing a bunch of damage here. Erwin Rommel has reloaded, but is being stabbed over and over again. Erwin Rommel is hurt. He's gone into enrage mode. So if he wins this, then fair play, then respect to him. But I don't think he can. But Erwin Rommel is low on health here. And oh my God, Cortez wins that battle. Battle 14. Genghis Khan, Ragnar. Our Lord Brock. This is going to be a heavy duelist battle. Just got crotch shot to the head. Now, I will say the Viking, of course, Ragnar has a shield, which is going to be absolutely critical in defending against Genghis Khan here. These two just swinging relentlessly at one another. Is either of them going to get the upper hand here? How long? Oh, tell you what, that was a ball shot right there. Genghis Khan playing dirty, but I mean, to be fair, in a fight to the death, you use everything you've got, right? Both of them spending a lot of time on the 
the floor here, to be fair. Oh, who just won that? Genghis Khan kills his enemy and appears to be celebrating on his body in true Mongolian fashion. Genghis Khan wins that battle. Battle 15. Julius Caesar, Shaka. This is gonna be another big melee fight here. Both of them dodging before even hitting each other. That is a weak start to a battle, but a big hit from Shaka. I would say, though, it looks like Shaka definitely getting the upper hand here against Julius Caesar. And he's also got a shield, which cannot be discounted. I tell you what, he's just abusing Julius Caesar and then dodging all of his hits. This is actually painful to watch. Shaka is 100% winning this battle, but I've been wrong before and I will be wrong again. Julius Caesar back on his feet, beginning to do some damage here, actually. Surprisingly, Shaka, oh my god. God, the back kick. Roundhouse of the century. Shaka wins that battle. Battle 16. Lenin Xerxes. Yet another battle that I'm pretty sure we never thought we were gonna see. Lenin with his hammer and sickle is gonna try and take on Xerxes. Lenin trying to spread communism to ancient Persia. Let's see how this goes. Boys, one of these guys could go over the river. If one of them dies in the river, that's a legit win. Map deaths count. Decided to just lie down for a nap. No, he's back up. He was just playing. Come on, Xerxes. Oh my god, they've tackled each other over the side. But who's gonna die first? That is true, communism. Nobody wins. They both lose. Oh my god, no. Lenin's managed to claw himself out of the end. I think I saw Xerxes going out first. Okay, what a way to determine this battle. Who wins? Blue victory defeated red team. Lenin was the first to die. Die. Xerxes wins that battle. From 32 factions, only 16 factions remain. Subscribe and click that bell icon. Do it. Do it now.